So good morning, uh, everybody. We uh, welcome to the Nevada Adaptive Webinar on Unbreakable Internet. Um, Adrian Tate and Tony Coombs are, are going to be host, uh, uh, on the, hosting the uh, thing with myself, Mark Highland. Um, this session is to introduce the solutions that Adaptive can can deliver, um, and we can uh, we're really pleased in adding Adaptive the Adaptive product range to our portfolio. Um, We've been involved, um, I've been involved in data networks from the very beginning, and the network has never been more crucial in the way that we both live, uh, we live both at home and in work. Um, and, and I remember a comment being made that work is not a place, it is something you do, uh, and location in this evolving world is absolutely irrelevant nowadays. So, yeah, the network is very, very key. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna run through this. I'm gonna hand over to Adrian in a moment, but very quickly, um, if if you have any questions through the event, please use the question section within the the GoToWebinar application, and we will answer all the questions at the end end of the session. So, um, very quick overview for those of you who don't know um, uh, Novola. Uh, next slide. That would be great. And uh, so, Novola is a, a, a technology and service distributor. We were formed out of a service business. Um, uh, we're over 10 years, 11 years old now, and uh, we originally were, were involved with Unified Communications or the voice space. Um, and as you can see from this slide, we've got a, a, a small collection of products which we like to connect uh, and, and believe that are, uh, uh, provide solutions uh, collectively. So we've got a, a collection of um, UCAS solutions or um, uh, yeah, U and unified communication solutions. We've got professional services. Um, we've also got a division or group that we call the Intelligent Networks which is where the uh, adaptive product fits uh, into. So um, we're you know, really quite, uh, again, excited by the uh, op opportunity that um, the adaptive product brings to us and to you as, as, as our partners and, and, and in turn to your end users. So with that, I would like to hand over to Adrian Tate. Uh, Adrian is the VP of sales for EMEA and the APAC region. And he will take you through the, the products and solutions. Great. Um, thanks very much, Mark, and good morning, everybody. So, as Mark says, I'm Adrian Tate of Adaptive Networks. Some of you um, I know that have registered for this event are already familiar with Adaptive Networks. Others of you may not have heard of us. Um, we are a Canadian headquartered company. Uh, relatively small at the moment. We are about 60 people strong. We have been around for a number of years. Um, originally, the company was called Tello IP, uh, but it changed its brand and its name at the end of 2018 to Adaptive Networks and moved away from just specifically focusing on link load balancing technologies more into the SD-WAN marketplace. So it's been around for about 10 years in both guises, but as Adaptive Network since the end of 2018, we have focused up till this point specifically on North America. We have hundreds of customers in those two, in both Canada and the United States of America. Um, and our message really is to simplify the SD-WAN marketplace. Uh, we're talking really about bringing to market a solution that is amazingly simple, reliable, affordable, and delivers unbreakable cloud connectivity. Um, that's our, our mission, um, and we differentiate ourselves very much through this simplicity and affordability message. So in today's session, uh, this is what you will learn from this webinar. Uh, so, uh, I know that we have some people on the call who won't be familiar with SD-WAN. We have others of you who are extremely experienced and knowledgeable about SD-WAN. So, I hope those of you who know all this already will bear with me as we just go through some of the uh, sort of descriptions and explanations of SD-WAN. Um, 
before we move on to the meat of the technology. Uh, but you, you, I will be covering what is SD-WAN and where does adaptive networks fit uh, versus other better known vendors in the marketplace. Before we, we look specifically at uh, the benefits of the adaptive solution for cloud voice solutions, uh, and also this very hot topic at the moment of working from home. Uh, also, what's the go-to-market strategy and the commercial models? I, I will be going through all of that with you um, by talking about specific use cases, and we will be showing you the pricing that is available to you as partners, as either managed service providers or resellers, um, so that you can go away and work out how that might fit within your overall go-to-market strategy as well, how you might be able to build this service into the offerings that you have. Uh, and it's important that you know the, the pricing models that are available to you. Um, how do you sell it? I hope that will become very clear as we go through this presentation. Uh, and then finally, why should you partner with Nuvola and Adaptive? So uh, we'll be summarizing at the end uh, all of that and what's in it for you. So those are the objectives that hopefully I will be able to tick off as I go through. As Mark says, if you do have questions, please submit those via the question button um, and uh, we will uh, go through those at the end of the presentation. Let me just check if, if there's anybody that cannot see my slides. So we, we are on the one that says sd wan Business Drivers. So if, if anyone's not seeing the slides, please do uh, put your hand up or, or say something now, because uh, I'm just going to progress through the presentation, assuming that it's, it's visible to everybody. OK, good. So um, the sd wan marketplace has been talked about I would suggest for about the last four years. Uh, people have been talking about SD-WAN. I've been in this marketplace for a number of years myself. And uh, you know, I know that uh, the first couple of years were very much around education. Everybody was thinking, well, what is this strange new beast called SD-WAN? Why is everybody getting excited about it? So it might feel to you that SD-WAN has been around for a long time. But actually, in terms of true revenue generating opportunity, it's only been in the last year or two that companies have started to invest in SD-WAN solutions. So as a reseller considering SD-WAN for your business, you're not too late to the party. <laughs> you're very much on time, I would argue. Um, so you know, a number of drivers are, are sort of uh, putting momentum behind this marketplace. The first one, and the, probably the most important one, is the adoption of cloud applications, cloud services. Uh, and because of that, organizations now need to have internet links that are of a high quality, of a high reliability, that will deliver those cloud services uh, on behalf of the service provider. So cloud application and adoption is, is, I think, the most significant driver be behind SD-WAN because organizations have invested in private networks, particularly MPLS technology for larger companies, but even for smaller and medium-sized companies. And MPLS, of course, is, is not able to support cloud applications. It requires internet connectivity into those cloud applications and internet links traditionally are not um, as reliable, not as performant, um, and do not carry the same service levels as you would get with those private network technologies. So it's, that's really the key driver behind SD-WAN. The branch networking simplification, I think, is more applicable for the larger organizations. They're, they have a number of devices out of branch offices, from routers to firewalls to um, all sorts of other boxes, uh, WAN optimization technologies, um, that could be a number. So branch network simplification, where some of the SD-WAN solutions put all of that together into single boxes, is interesting to larger organizations. It's not so much uh, of interest to the small and medium marketplace, which is where we tend to focus, and I believe most of you on the uh, webinar focus. But where, what is also important is network cost reduction. So all businesses are always looking for ways of reducing costs. And SD-WAN is perceived to be a, a method for reducing network costs. 
Ironically, if you look at the um, enterprise vendors in the marketplace, they will very rarely be able to deliver cost savings with an SD-WAN technology, partly because their price model and their price points are just too high to, um, to generate those cost savings. But as we go through this presentation, I hope you will become reasonably excited and impressed by the cost points that we're talking about, and you will may be able to see how you can offer cost savings to your customers as well with this technology. Um, there's various definitions of SD-WAN on, uh, on the internet. That you can get the technical definitions, which I've shown here in, uh, in gray, but uh, the, the definition I like is more of a salesy commercial definition because it focuses much more on business value and business benefits. But it, it's really delivering this security, reliability and performance uh, that customers are used to getting from expensive MPLS type networks but delivering that on much lower cost internet links, uh, which traditionally has not been possible, and that enables these businesses to save money. So that, you know, if you're familiar with the SD-WAN marketplace, you'll know that there are many, many companies out there that offer SD-WAN technologies. Uh, the, these are probably the main names you will come across, but there are many, many others as well. Uh, but if you were to look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant that covers SD-WAN, which is actually more of a, a WAN edge Magic Quadrant, but that's where this technology tends to sit, you will see these names, particularly the ones on the right-hand side, you know, Cisco, Silverpeak, Juniper, VMware, VeloCloud. Uh, the, the reason for that is because those organizations focus very much on the enterprise marketplace and the requirements there. Um, for their enterprise customers who want to have a mix of MPLS that they've invested in for many, many years, alongside much more reliable performance internet capability, so that they can then move to a network architecture where they can break out at branch offices to the internet and cloud services, rather than backhauling to the data center as the single point out onto the internet. So they have very specific requirements. Um, and we do have a solution within Adaptive Networks called Elfeek by Adaptive Networks. This is an acquisition we made last year in the middle of the, the year, um, which focuses specifically on, on the enterprise market. But we're not here to discuss that today. Um, we're here to focus much more on the SD-WAN as a service that is delivered by our Adaptive solution. But I wanted you to be aware that uh, you know, we do have a, a, a solution that is available through Nuvola as well if you have specific uh, requirements or customers who would perhaps fall into the enterprise world. One of the big drawbacks about all of these technologies is that they are not multi-tenanted. So they're not ideal for um, MSPs like yourselves if you want to be offering managed services, uh, managed SD-WAN services to your customers having a, a non-multi-tenanted solution is a bit awkward. You would have to set up a separate environment for every single customer of yours. And that's why these technologies tend to focus on the large enterprise where they will buy it and they will manage it in-house through their own network team. Um, and it's, they're not really designed for resellers and MSPs like yourselves. Uh, some solutions focus very much on the, the large carriers and selling through those large carriers. So Versa Networks, InfoVista, Nuage will be focusing their solutions on the requirements of the big carriers like BT Global Services, a Vodafone, uh, Orange Business Services, Verizon, AT&T, those sorts of big carriers that are trying still to uh, control their customer base and keep their customer base wrapped into managed services from them that are very expensive and quite often don't deliver what they promise. Uh, again, not really focused on the SME marketplace at all. There's a number of security vendors who have very good SD-WAN solutions. Again, they tend to suffer from the problems of not being multi-tenanted, but also you have to recognize that their, their main purpose is to help them sell more network firewalls. So they, they are very good on security, they don't tend to go quite as deep on the performance and optimization side. So they can, there may be some uh, uh, sort of missing elements of what they can offer for the SD-WAN marketplace, but they, they're offering a fully integrated solution 
but again, tending to be targeted at the enterprise marketplace. And then you have this, this quadrant that uh, Adaptive fits into, which is a, about uh, a service offering SD-WAN as an over-the-top network as a service. Uh, and what I mean by that is the, the customer doesn't need to do anything um, other than pay for the service. Uh, they are buying a service from a trusted managed service partner like yourselves, um, and that's all they need to worry about. They don't have to be network experts uh, at all. Um, they, they rely on their trusted managed service partners to manage these networks uh, architecture for them. This tends to be more small and medium type organizations who tend not to have MPLS at the moment, um, or they plan to move away from MPLS in their entirety um, and focus very much on the uh, internet type connectivity around broadband, LTE, you know, 4G, 5G, that type of thing. Um, and they can't justify big upfront CapEx expenditures. They want to pay for this on an OPEX basis, on a monthly or annual basis. Uh, and there's not many of the vendors that can offer that. Uh, these are three of them, us, um, Ariaka and Cato. You'll probably be familiar with those two as well. But, but even then, their focus is very much at the enterprise end of the marketplace. They're, they're not cheap solutions. They're quite expensive these days. They have worldwide networks uh, and it's their own network. So particularly in the case of Ariaka, it's their own network. So they are a one-stop shop from the branch office at one end to the branch office at the other end, wherever that may be in the world. Um, they, they are delivering their own solutions. So, um, so there's no independence there. If you, if you have an Ariaka solution, you're tied into Ariaka for everything. Um, so this is where adaptive plays, and uh, as I say, we focus very much on the small and medium enterprise end. Um, does any uh, uh, Mark has anyone logged a question yet that, regarding that? No, no, there's no question okay. yet. So cool, right. absolutely perfect with, with what you're saying, Adrian. I think. Right. Okay. I will continue on then. Um, so th this really um, just confirms the focus for both of our technologies. I mentioned Elfeek, that will focus on the enterprise marketplace, um, whereas the adaptive SD-WAN as a service is focused much more at the mid-market and small businesses. Um, one of that uniquenesses is that it's just as good for a single branch office as it is for many branch offices. And there is no limit to the number of branch offices that we can support. Uh, you know, there's no reason why an organization with hundreds of branches couldn't make use of the adaptive SD-WAN as a service. But in general, the sorts of customers that we find ourselves dealing with would be the smaller businesses, probably under a thousand employees, maybe branch uh, up to say 20 branch offices, that type of thing. That would be our bread and butter. But there's no technical reason why this couldn't fit for, let's say, a high street retailer who has hundreds of shops around the country or across the European continent. Um, so no, no technical limitation, it's more of a, a brand awareness limitation that means that we tend to be focusing on smaller organizations with um, maybe 10 to 20 branch offices. So the solutions that we have on offer, um, we, we have two actually. One is called SD Internet and the other is called SD WAN. Uh, so I've, I've sort of branded them under the, the generic title of SD WAN, but it is important to understand that there are two technologies here. Uh, so the SD Internet is targeted at those organizations that are single site organizations. So they have no wide area network other than uh, connecting out to the internet or to cloud applications. Um, so they don't need all the additional security elements that you get with SD-WAN. They just need the um, access, the simple, secure, reliant access, reliable access to their cloud services. So it could be single site type organizations, your local accountant's office, your local solicitors, or, or it could be organizations where they have multiple sites, but there is no requirement for site to site communication. Each site is just acting individually and uh, requiring access to cloud services. 
So retail could be a good example of this. You could have a regional retailer with 25 shops around the local area, but those shops don't communicate with each other. There's no need for um, secure encrypted data between those, those shops, but they all do need to access the EPOS system that is hosted in some cloud somewhere. So SD Internet is ideal for that type of scenario. Uh, and I'm not aware of another SD Internet similar solution out there in the marketplace. I think this is a, a unique offering that Adaptive is bringing to the market. If you've got customers though that are multi-site and do need that site-to-site -site connectivity and therefore they need the additional security and resilience of that, uh, which by what which I mean the IPsec tunnels and the encryption of the traffic uh, traversing the network, then we just uh, switch on the additional functionality within the solution for SD-WAN. So the, the two services are the same solution running on the same appliances at the edge, but we're, we are um, switching on additional info, uh, capability with the SD-WAN solution. So the sorts of value or benefits that we can bring it, it are listed here on this slide. So first of all, we have the ability to aggregate multiple links up to eight links can be aggregated. It's rare that we find um, small businesses that would have more than two links, maybe three maximum with some kind of LTE backup or failover link, but that would be perhaps the, the, the sum total of it. But we can aggregate those broadband links uh, to, um, to aggregate the, the bandwidth between those links. So if you have a 100 meg link and a 50 meg secondary link, then we're, we'll be aggregating that bandwidth to uh, a combined uh, total of 150 meg. Um, the really unique part of this is this automatic seamless link failover. The, uh, the ability for a real-time application, such as a, a voice call or a, a video meeting, where if the primary link it fails, you don't want to be dropped from that call, uh, especially if it's a call with a customer uh, where it's customer service or it's actually sales. Um, you certainly do not want that call to be dropping. So with the solution, it's seamless failover and the call is retained. Um, people on the call, including you, would be none the wiser that there had been a failover to your secondary link. It is seamless. Um, and, and so the call remains and you just carry on as normal. That is a, a real benefit of this technology. Uh, we also steer the traffic or the packets uh, over the active links uh, based on specific uh, ratios that you can set. So you know, a, a standard default would be in the example of a 100 meg link and a 50 meg link would be to send twice as many packets over the 100 meg link as we do over the 50 meg link, but you can control those ratios if you want to. But it just means that we treat both links as active. Um, and very importantly, we offer quality of service in both directions because the edge appliance is linking to our adaptive cloud gateway. It means that we can control the traffic and prioritize the traffic in both directions, which is very important. Uh, and all of this is managed through a cloud portal that you as the managed service provider would have access to. Um, and you can also give your customer access to it um, from a reporting uh, and an analytics basis if, you, if the customer wants that and you want that, but uh, it's all cloud managed. So what, what are we providing within the service? It's every component that is required to deliver the service. So the adaptive edge CP appliance, the adaptive gateway, that uh, that appliance connects to the adaptive core network, which is a, a network transport that is supplied by two separate carriers, one being cogent, the other being all stream, so that we have uh, resilience in our core network and the, the cloud management portal. So there is nothing else that is required to enable this service to run. All of it is supplied within the annual subscription price that we'll be coming to shortly. So this just gives you the diagrammatic or visibility, uh, visual um, overview of the architecture. So edge appliances sitting out at branch offices, connecting to the closest adaptive gateway, um, 
which then gives access into the adaptive core network. The moment the traffic reaches the adaptive gateway, that's our responsibility. We manage the gateways, we manage the adaptive core network, um, and we, we manage the gate, the destination gateway as well. So that's our responsibility. That's part of what's being paid for. The, the, the responsibility of yourselves is the edge side of things, your customer premises. So where the adaptive equipment sits, that's your responsibility, but in conjunction with Nuvola, who can provide support for you as well. Um, so hopefully that makes it very clear as to exactly how this looks from an architectural perspective. Uh, and just to give you uh, an understanding of the edge appliances that are available, uh, I'm yet to see a, a requirement for an E60. Uh, currently, you know, most small businesses have um, don't have the bandwidth requirements up to one gig, their 500 meg throughput of an E40 is perfectly adequate. So the E40, just to give you a perspective on the size of it, if you were to put two packets of cigarettes side by side, that's about the size of the E40. It's a very small, compact device, low cost, um, that can sit in, in a small branch office or in a home, very unobtrusive, and, and control the and manage the traffic going through it. But we do have the, the bigger, larger device, the E60, for um, those customers who may have a larger bandwidth requirement. So that gives you um, an understanding of the technology itself. I, I, just to bring it all to life, I wanted to take you through the various use cases that we see for this. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Just bear with me. So the first use case is what we call unbreakable UCAS or CCAS, CCAS being contact center as a service, UCAS unified communications as a service, but actually it can be any cloud service. It doesn't have to be specifically voice or contact center, any cloud service that people are um, accessing from their branch offices, it would fit into this use case of unbreakable internet. And what's the issue here? The situation is that most uh, business communications are critical, especially voice and video. And I think uh, nobody could argue with that over the last 12 months, how critical voice and video communications have become because face-to-face -face meetings have just not been possible. But the problem with that is from a quality perspective, IP is the bane of voice over IP. The last mile internet links from the branch office uh, to the service are susceptible to poor quality based on physically bad links, packet loss, jitter and latency. The quality of a lot of these internet links uh, is just not good enough to deliver a quality service for these cloud applications. So the SD internet solution would be suitable for this because there is no uh, on-premise applications, that, so no need to uh, access the, the organization's private network. This is specifically services that are out there in the cloud. Um, and as I've mentioned, we, we can prioritize these voice or UCAS applications using our quality of service in both directions, reserving bandwidth in the case of congestion, uh, um, What's the word I was trying to think of? Yeah, calibrating, yeah, calibrating the links so that they're performing optimally, uh, aggregating the bandwidth uh, across those multiple links, the seamless failover, the traffic steering, all of those things that I've previously mentioned. So as you can see with this use case, um, on the right hand side, if you look at the diagram, you'll see that actually what we're doing is breaking out at the edge appliance, the non-voice video traffic and sending that directly to the public cloud and the internet, freeing up the, uh, the IPsec tunnel between our edge device and the adaptive gateway, purely and simply for cloud voice and video traffic or whatever cloud service it is that um, you're, you're trying to manage through this. Uh, so immediately you've got a form of quality of service just through that internet breakout at the edge, but uh, within the tunnel then you can use the QoS rules to prioritize specific applications on top of that. So the pricing model for that, it, we've, done, we've set it up to mirror 
how these types of services are sold, which uh, is per user per month. So we have a per user per month pricing model, which you can see here. Um, this is unique um, to Nuvola in that uh, there is an upfront cost, which can run from zero to about 250 pounds for the appliance itself. Um, and based on that, then that will determine what the monthly price per user will be. So the more that the customer is prepared to pay up front for the, the device that's going to sit in the branch office, that edge device, the less they will be paying per user per month for the service itself. So th there are an infinite number of uh, ways of calculating this. Uh, you can plug in with Nubola any sort of upfront investment and see what difference that makes to the price per user per month. But as you can see, this is the price to you as the reseller. This would be your buy price from Nuvola. Um, and it's relatively low prices. You, you would be saying to your customer, uh, let's say you perhaps put a 20% markup on this. Maybe you're coming in around the £3.50 to £4 mark, depending upon the number of users. Um, you know, that's a fairly low cost for a customer to stomach, to give them the unbreakable connectivity to these cloud services. So it really is a very attractive proposition for your customers. Uh, there is a minimum purchase required of 10 users. We call that a base license. So uh, initially, any deal that you do does require a base license, which includes those 10 user licenses. Um, otherwise, it just becomes unviable for all, all of us in this uh, supply chain to make money from it. So there, there's got to be a minimum of 10 users. Doesn't mean you can't sell it to customers with fewer than 10 users, but there is a minimum of 10 user price. So you know, they would be paying more per user for that, but it, it would still be saleable there. Um, and there's 12, 24 and 36 month options available. Uh, and as I say, by varying the upfront cost will vary the price per user per month. Work from home. So this has become a very, very hot topic, uh, obviously, over the last 12 months. Uh, many people are now working from home. They will continue to do so on a part time or permanent basis, and they will require access to both cloud services, but also on premise uh, data center hosted services. The problem with this is firstly, home broadbands are notoriously unreliable. They're a poor, of a poor quality and uh, everyone's experienced the, the problems of packet loss jitter frozen screens. Uh, we're all very familiar with the, with the downsides of home working and the contention between work or business traffic and domestic traffic. So, you know, again, what is the value that we can bring to this? Uh, well, if we're looking specifically at cloud only applications, then it would be SD, SD Internet as a service. If it uh, requires um, access to the on-premise applications, the private corporate network, then it would be the SD-WAN as a service. But even for those people who just have a single link from for their home broadband, because most people do, they don't have dual links. So if they've just got a single link, there is value from our technology. Firstly, our technology will calibrate that link and rate limit the bandwidth to the most efficient and effective bandwidth for that, uh, that link. So you know, it doesn't mean that if somebody's got a 60 meg link, that 60 meg is the best throughput, the most effective throughput for that link. It could well be that um, it should be calibrated at some uh, throughput figure lower than that. And so that technology will will do that. We'll assess that for you, um, and will rate limit the the home broadband link to the most optimal throughput. We can also apply QoS rules to prioritise business traffic, reserving the bandwidth um, in case of congestion versus you know, Netflix homeschooling that sort of thing. Um, so so just with a single link, we can achieve that. We also have the ability to break out domestic traffic at the edge. So it's not contending for the same bandwidth that the business traffic is. So as you can see from the diagram, 
we're breaking out that Netflix and the homeschooling and the just internet surfing type traffic from the edge appliance and restricting the IPsec tunnel specifically for um, more important traffic, work traffic. Um, and the MSP, you would have visibility into the performance and key metrics of all of this. So just with one single broadband link, there is a huge amount of value that our technology will bring to it. And actually, I'm working exactly in that scenario. I, I've um, put an adaptive appliance into my home. I'm working through that. We have applied quality of service rules to Teams uh, meetings and, and um, video conferencing meetings so that I don't have any contention from other people work, working here in, in my house uh, on schooling or whatever. Yeah. Now, a lot of people will, will pay out for an additional LTE modem to give them the ability to fail over in the event that they have difficulties with their internet broadband. So uh, we can do that seamless failover to an LTE link uh, for those people who are prepared to invest in that LTE link. Um, or if, if your business, if your customer's business is prepared to pay for their employees to have that additional business broadband line coming into the house, then it can be set up obviously for the, uh, the traffic to go over the business broadband, but to be able to fail over to the home broadband link in the event of a link going down. So there's a huge amount of value that can be brought to, um, to the home working environment using SD Internet or SD WAN as a service. And the price for that is uh, we have a home edition price. We don't care about the amount of bandwidth that uh, is coming to the home. Usually it's going to be um, less than 100 meg. So we do, if, uh, when we configure this, we do put a, a limit of 100 meg on it, but uh, that's a soft threshold. We, we, we can increase that if we need to, but it's rarely required for a home working environment. So, you know, this is the cost, um, an annual subscription price of 375 pounds. That's again, the price that you would be buying this service from. So you would uplift it from there. For the SD WAN and Home Edition, £439. Again, you would uplift from there to, to make your margin. Um, we talk about monthly subscription. To be completely frank, from an adaptive perspective, we, we, are, we will charge an annual subscription for that. Um, so the monthly subscription would be something that you could potentially benefit from, either from uh, conversations with Nuvola as our partner, or you know, it might be something that you're willing to take on put on behalf of your customer but you know, from adaptive perspective we, we are really asking that um, you sell it as an annual subscription because that's what we would want to uh, charge from our side uh, you have the options again for 12 24 36 months um, and the the hardware would need to be purchased at this price here of um, 323 pounds so that is a one-off hardware cost associated with this work from home scenario. We then have the more traditional SD-WAN around a branch uh, network. So when, when the world get back, gets back to normal and people are still working from branch offices, uh, we need SD-WAN capabilities from those branch offices. Uh, so this is the, the much more familiar SD-WAN architecture. Um, and you know, the situation here is that companies are moving more and more to digital transformation, i.e. to cloud applications, and their legacy WANs are just too expensive, too rigid and unsuitable for that cloud and internet era. So you know, the problems with that is that the WAN designs are just too inflexible, they're not agile enough, the businesses are paying too much for those, those WANs. Um, and the cheaper internet links are unreliable and, and I, um, are unable to deliver uh, a decent quality of experience to the end user. Um, and the passive links are an expensive insurance policy. So they are there for failover, but you know, it rarely happens on those private networks. So the customer is paying for expensive backup links that they very rarely use. So with, with our 
SD WAN as a service, then you get all of the same uh, benefits that I've talked about already on this call uh, the link aggregation, the seamless failover, the traffic steering, the cloud management, uh, all of that good stuff. Um, and you can see from the, the architectural diagram here on the right hand side how that might function. So, uh, multiple ISP links at each individual branch office providing that. Uh, resilience uh, and failover capability, the aggregation of the of the bandwidth um, going through the tunnel. Uh, and so this is how it would work. Each branch office would be connecting out to the adaptive gateway that is closest to that branch office. Um, and then it would the traffic would traverse the, uh, the the adaptive core network and break out at the gateway that is closest to the destination office that um, the, the traffic is destined for. Now, of course, if everything is in the UK, then it won't traverse the core network. We'll go into our UK gateway and uh, and then be uh, uh, directed out of our UK gateway to the target or destination branch office. So it doesn't have to traverse the core network with, <laughs> if, if the, um, the offices are all um, accessing the same gateway. Again, we've got the ability to break out at the edge or you know, non-critical traffic, cloud, uh, public cloud traffic, maybe it's guest Wi-Fi traffic, but you know, those sorts of things can still be broken out at the edge rather than uh, going through the, the, the tunnel. And so the pricing for this type of scenario is based on the bandwidth requirements at each site. So there are bandwidth thresholds here for both SD Internet and SD WAN. So, in order to understand what the price might be for your customers, you would need to understand the bandwidth requirements at uh, each of their branch offices and at their data center. Uh, and then the applicable price point would apply here that we're, we're showing. Um, so, this is slightly more complicated just because it has more uh, thresholds to the pricing, uh, but you can easily get a quote from from Nuvola for this, um, but this gives you an indication of what the price point might be for your customers. And then finally, um, I wanted to talk to you about a new product that we are currently developing. It's currently at beta testing stage, so will be available come sort of mid-April time. That's the time frame that's targeted at the moment called MyConnect. Uh, and this is another work from home solution, but it, it has a very specific uh, use case scenario at this point in time. Um, and it's specifically for customers who need access only to on-premise applications. So they're, they're accessing the private network from their home um, and they, they have a, a requirement for some of the uh, additional benefits of SD-WAN. Um, so the issues at the moment are similar to the other work from home scenario that home broadbands are not notoriously unreliable and of a poor quality business traffic and domestic traffic are competing for the bandwidth, etc. Um, so what does MyConnect do? Well, firstly, it is an edgeless solution. It runs as an app on the person's laptop. That's very appealing. Um, but as I say, it's specifically at this point in time just for accessing uh, corporate applications that are within the private network. Um, the internet or cloud traffic will break out from the, uh, the, the home laptop uh, and therefore will not be controlled and shaped by our, our application. Um, but it, it's still establishing an IPsec tunnel to our gateway with 256 AES encryption. And it's providing link conditioning, which I talked about previously. Uh, so we will still be calibrating the link from the, the home laptop out to our gateway. Um, and we will uh, be uh, applying forward error correction uh, on business critical traffic going through that, uh, through that tunnel. Uh, and you have the ability still to fail over to an LTE backup link uh, if you if the laptop is capable of supporting the an LTE modem or LTE dongle. So there, there's e elements of our SD-WAN and SD internet 
technology, but it's not the full blown thing, um, as I say, specifically for, uh, it, I guess it's really to replace the VPNs that people have been struggling with during this um, lockdown period, is, is that this gives VPN plus additional value. And so it's charged at a very low price. Um, your buy price is £92 for a year. So you might well be selling this onto your customer at uh, an annual subscription of a little over a hundred pounds. Uh, so you're talking about something akin to maybe ten pounds a month for your customer and for a home worker. So very very low cost. As I say, that's because it's um, it's replacing people's VPNs that they've got at the moment that they're having problems with. But we know that VPNs are low cost also. Uh, but th this is a better solution um, and, and gives those home workers the reliability and, and the quality of experience when connecting into the corporate network. Finally, I just wanted to talk about some marketing support that Adaptive Networks provides. So if you do want to resell the Adaptive Solutions, um, via Nuvola, you will still be given access to our partner portal um, so that you can get access to all of the great assets that we have in our partner portal. So I've just put up four screenshots here um, to help you understand what our partner portal looks like. So on, on the top left would be the home dashboard that you would log into. Uh, and here you would see, um, you know, Anything new that we want to tell you about, you'll see, you'll see the leads that maybe have come through that have been passed to you. you you'll see your opportunities if you've logged them into our partner portal. Uh, that you'll see this home dashboard of activity by people within your organization. Um, but what's really interesting is the assets. There's a ton of assets already available. There's no need for you to create your own assets. As you can see here on the top right, um, if you're in the assets tab, you can type in um, to the search box something like Cloud Voice, and it will list those uh, assets that are available for you to use um, to be able to sell Cloud Voice. And a number of these assets can be uh, co branded with your logo and your contact details on them. So uh, you can go into our partner portal and download these assets, and you will see that your logo will be inserted and your contact details will be inserted alongside the adaptive logo. But you can see we've got videos, we've got product sheets um, uh, as well, and we have white papers and all sorts of things. Um, likewise, if you look bottom left, you'll see I've done a search on home office. And again, we've, uh, we've come up with various home office assets that could be utilized by yourselves to send to your customers. Um, and then finally, on the bottom right, I wanted to highlight that there's on-demand training as well for both salespeople and pre-sales engineers. Um, so in the playbook tab uh, at the top of the uh, screen, um, you, you then get access to various video trainings around um, different technologies. I've talked about Elfeek as our um, enterprise target solution. So there's Elfeek on-demand training there for pre-sales engineers and sales people. There's also for the adaptive solution, as you can see there, the highlighted in green partner SE training, um, partner sales training, and also training on how to do the co-branded assets. Um, it really is an excellent partner portal. Uh, I'm so impressed by what the very small adaptive networks marketing team has been able to put together with that. So my last slide before I, I finish is uh, you know, why partner with adaptive networks? Just to summarize really some of the key points. You know, our solution is designed for small and medium resellers and managed service providers like yourselves. It's targeted at the SME customer base. So I, I would tend to say organizations of less than a thousand employees, but it's not restricted to that, but that's where we target it. That differentiates us from most of the players out there in the marketplace. It is a 100% indirect sales model. We do not have our own sales force. You will not find yourself competing with adaptive salespeople going out there and uh, and grabbing your deals from you because a customer says they'd rather deal directly with the vendor than deal through a partner. You know, we take the view that 
because it's a, a service, customers would prefer to buy that service from a trusted managed service partner of, of theirs. So that, that's why it's 100% indirect. I've shown you the, the capabilities through the uh, partner portal around training and co-branding of assets. Uh, you have the option to white label your own managed service with this. You don't have to tell people, your customers, it's an adaptive managed service. You could uh, white label it with your own brand. Um, you know, uniquely, it's as applicable for single sites as it is for multi-sites with our SD internet capability. As you've seen, we do have a multiple work from home options dependent upon the client need, their budget, and the seniority probably of the, the end users that are working from home. Um, I'm sure that some customers will look at the option of having MyConnect, very cheap option for many employees, but maybe for more senior people or, or customer facing people, they would want to have the, the more complete SD internet or SD-WAN service with, with the appliance. Uh, but in, invariably what we're offering here is low priced SD-WAN. That in my mind equals short sales cycle, which equals minimum, minimal sales effort, which equals volume business for you and for Nuvola and for us. And um, with that, um, I'd like to hand over to you, Mark, so you can just talk briefly about Nuvola. Adrian, thank you very much indeed. That's uh, that's great. So, yeah, as I as I said at the beginning, um, a lot of the stuff that Adrian's talked about resonated with us very yeah ex ex extremely loudly because um, as Nuvola has been involved in unified communications, voice over IP, UCAS, CPAS, CCA, uh, you know, contact centres you know, as a service from the very beginning um, and we've been involved in many many rollouts of these these types of solutions um, and nearly every time there was a problem the problem would have been based around the network you know the bad links the packet loss jitter and the latency that, that, that Adrian's talked about um, and to provide to provide a solution um, which provided quality of service it's unbreakable capability and also be able to prioritize the applications and, and, and the services that are, are on this network is absolutely crucial. So again, we uh, you know, I, the model I showed you before of you know the areas and the technology that we have as, as a distributor, we, we, we have also got um, a help desk, we've got engineering uh, resource, extensive engineering resource because that's where Nivola distribution originated from uh, an engineering business um, providing services to partners. Um, so we've also got um, pre-sale support and, and knowledge experience. Uh, Tony Coombs is is on is on the call um, and he uh, yeah, yeah he's got an extensive amount of experience in, in this space. Um, and we've got other a lot of lot of other resource on the pre-sale support that can help you, you know, put install this and, and put this into the into the environments for your customers. The other thing we can offer is is flexibility with um, as we've already demonstrated or agents uh, shown slides on on different pricing models, different month uh, monthly uh, contracts uh, lengths. Um, again, we, you know, we're, we're extremely flexible in the ability to give the right solution in the right, um, in the right model for you and for your customers. Um, we'll also be holding uh, uh, hardware inventory and, and sourcing and, and stuff and, and management of, of that. We can also add, and I would endorse what Adrian said regarding the marketing output of um, Adaptive's marketing team it, it, you know, it's really, really very, very impressive uh, and very, very professional. Um, what we can also do is add our resource, our marketing uh, team capabilities um, and, and work with you if required and adaptive to, you know, to, to market and you know, to, to your customers uh, these solutions. Uh, I've also already mentioned the first line uh, technical support, a, a help desk. Um, professional services that we off, offer, but also more importantly, we have professional services based around our other technologies, and and add in you know a, a UCAS solution with with um, the adaptive solution, 
you know, it really does give your your ability to provide your customers with a not only a, 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 a UCAS solution, but an unbreakable UCAS solution. Um, and then uh, we've yeah we've got the ability to provide you know that whole in integration capability. If you if you don't need that, you've got that capability yourselves. That's fine. But you know we we have got that ability to have that and help you and assist you with that. So that's you know that's the reason we we work very closely with Adaptive. Um, uh, we you know we're also you know, Adrian mentioned about the Elfit products. You know we we, we, we you know but th um, that that is also sort of aimed at sl as as he's very clearly presented. That's a, a slightly different technology and, and, and positioned in a slightly different area. But again, if you've got customers that want that enterprise high end enterprise solution, then we we'll, uh, we're more than willing to talk to you about about that. So I think with the next slide. We've got. We wouldn't done that one, haven't we? So, either we've gone backwards or we've got that slide twice. So the next slide should. So I, 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 Sorry, think Mark, I, got... I, try, I am trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seem to have lost I mean, control. The next one is basically going to say if if you are if there's anything here that you're interested in, we will be trying to contact you after this call uh, after this call anyway. But um, if you could um, uh, email uh, John Allen at jallen at novolodistribution dot com or yeah, there we go. Uh, going down to the actual nuts. Right, there you go. Sorry okay. about that. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you contact John Allen on email um, or visit um, our website with the URL there um, or the adaptive website um, with the URL there, we will um, uh, we will get back to you and, you know, and we would love to talk to you further about this. I'm sure what Adrian's talked about has got your minds you know thinking about opportunities because i know that it, it's done with us you know every time you know we he, he, we talk about this product resellers say i've got a customer here that's that's got that problem identifies with that problem and you know we we you know that solution is perfect for what we want um and as i said with the flexibility that we've got with working with adaptive you know if you come to us with a problem then we will be able to provide a solution. So with that, we've got some questions coming in. So um, one, of the, one of the questions I've got is, if you're building a multi-site SD-WAN, where would you put additional security systems? I assume all traffic would have to be routed to a central site for this. Can this be done? That probably is a Tony question. Yeah, hi there. Uh can you hear me guys yeah yes should be out to good yeah so that's a really good question uh so i mean there are security capabilities built into into the solution adrian's touched on that already you know we you know for the sd uh wan solution we've got um you know uh, encryption ipsec tunnels between the appliances and of course there's also as you would expect there's a firewall built into the appliances as well but um, you know, to fit in with an overall security architecture, you still obviously need all the tools and solutions that you already have today. So um, you know, it depends on on the, the, the data flows. But generally, if if for example, all your data flows are going into a corporate office where you've got an appliance installed, then you know, obviously that would be a place where you would have your corporate firewall in place as well. So, um, you know, there's various solutions out there. And, you know, the key thing is, is that for any, any, any opportunity out there, if you need advice on that, you know, we're more than happy to, um, you know, talk to you and come up with some solutions to give you some guidance on where best to fit this into an overall security architecture. So um, I think that's the best way to answer it right now, but, um, you know, we can follow it on with other, um, ideas if you have any questions about that. You know, Brilliant, um, Tony. Thank you. So another another question I've got is um, 
we've got a customer that's experienced uh, issues with their their current uh, solution, uh, the UCAS solution. Uh, I won't mention the vendor. Um, can I arrange a trial of the adaptive solution for them? So that's probably an Adrian question. I, I guess. Yes. Um, right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so to be frank, I, I guess we're not that keen to do a free trial. You know, the price point has been uh, pitched at such a low level on this per user basis that um, I think our, our preference would be to say, look, just go ahead and take it on a 12 month contract or you know, maybe if uh, Lubola is happy to work on this basis, you know, take it on a, uh, a fewer month basis. But if it doesn't work for you, if you're not satisfied with it, it's not like you've spent out hundreds or thousands of pounds on a solution. You've been spending four pounds a month per user. So, you know, that that's to me would be a case of saying, look, really and truly, it's so cheap. Why don't you just take it for a uh, pilot number of users to begin with, see how it performs for you, and then if you're comfortable, roll it out. You know, I don't really want any of us as the three organizations in this supply chain to get embroiled in POCs that could run for 30 days, um, could involve cost of sale when you know, you're not going to be getting a huge amount of money um, out of the contract at the end of it. So, yeah, I would certainly suggest that that would be the approach is to tell them just to go ahead and and take it and, and see how they got on rather than uh, all of us having to do some kind of free POC for them. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. So another question we've got here, and actually I, I think I probably can answer this one. Can I invoice my customer on a monthly basis for the adaptive services? I think we've already shown in, in, in the slides and, and, and in the pricing models, and and you know I've stated already that the we are really extremely flexible. Of course, you can you can uh, charge a monthly basis on most of the solutions. We're looking to do that, um, and I, I, you know, we probably could even offer a billing sort of platform if you if if you if you hadn't got that already in place in sales. So, so the, uh, the ability to invoice customers on a monthly basis, abs absolutely, we can we can do that. Um, another question I have I've got that is probably Adrian. I I have a customer with sites in the UK, also in the US. France, Germany, and Netherlands. Does the adaptive solution work outside of the UK? Um, yes, a good question, because it's something I didn't cover, is where, where do we have our cloud gateways? So we have uh, several in North America that cover the United States and Canada. Um, and we also have gateways here in Europe, both in the UK, um, uh, hosted in AWS in London, and also in Frankfurt, again, hosted in AWS uh, data center there. So that those two gateways here in Europe will support pretty much most of the European countries uh, that are, uh, you're likely to be selling into. Certainly the three, the countries that were mentioned in that question, uh, would all be supported through that, the gateways in North America, London, and Frankfurt. And just to add to that, uh, from, from my side, Adrian, um, I'm actually based in France, and I've been using the adapted solution now for, what is it, almost three months now, so it's, it's been working perfectly over here. Great, thank you. Good to hear, Tony. <laughs> uh, Okay, so another another question I've got here is I have several customers where many staff are now working from home permanently, but we'll, we'll move to a mix of office, a hybrid model, I guess, after the lockdown. Can I sell a mixed work from home solution of SD Internet, SD WAN, and my Connect? Well, yeah, that that would be wonderful. That, that's a re really um, positive question, I think. So whoever put that in, thank you. I'm hoping you might even have. Uh, a live opportunity that that's you're thinking about there but yes of course um all of those technologies that they're, they're all uh, just connecting up to our adaptive gateway um so yeah no reason why you couldn't have some users on uh, sd internet 
uh, some on SD WAN because they need to get access to cloud applications as well as on premise applications, and then other users just on My Connect because their requirement is just for on premise applications. And the last question I've got at the moment is we sell cloud services but are not network experts. Can uh, Adaptive or Novolo run and support the adaptive solution on our behalf? Are you asking that to me, Marcus? So, uh, yeah. Well, I, well, I, yeah, yes, yes, go on. Okay. I, 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 could, I could answer that, but yeah, yeah, yeah well, from, the, better job. from the adaptive side, as I mentioned, uh, we are responsible for our gateways and the core network and the cloud portal um, that you, you as partners have access to. So, so all of that is handled on your behalf anyway, um, but the edge side of it, it will either be yourselves or with support from Nubola. So that's the bit, Mark, really where I think you could step in. Yeah, so again, one of the key words that I, I, we keep on uh, keep on mentioning is, is flexibility. So, I mean, this is where you have control um, with your customers. You know, it, we're not looking at you know, taking away any of the control and you can decide whether or not you, you provide that, you know, you, you manage that solution yourselves if you want us to, to to do that we we can offer those services um and you know it, it really is what you know what your skills are what your what your requirement is and, and how how you want to do that so you know we again we're very flexible uh, we're willing to look at each opportunity um uh, on its on its merits and 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 come you know work a, a work and work a deal for those so yeah um that's the, 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 there's some really good questions there. Um, I'm just quickly looking to see if any more coming in. No. So I think with that, the uh, yeah, the next. I mean, if, uh, can you put the next slide? I, I mean, it is just basically. Thank you very much uh, for your time. We've we've answered the questions. We are we have recorded the session, so we will be putting that up on. Um, yeah, at a, at a a later date, probably in the next few days, we we've also got another session which uh, which is based around this. But this 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 one we're, today was more for uh, existing partners and um, uh, of ours. So that's why we were very light on the Novola component. But um, again, really appreciate your time, and uh, and hopefully you know the, you you've seen some opportunity there. Which we can uh, we can all benefit from. So thank you very much and um, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.